okay, what is the value of a brand? What is the characteristic of a brand? Instead of this, I've given you another reading. You can read it there. I hope you'll have done that. Let me just go back to times later and I can go through that. The value of a brand. Why does it matter for a brand? See, if you need a product, you need a product. If you need a service, you just go and enjoy the service and come back. But why is the need or what, what is the actual necessity for you to have a brand? Any, any thoughts? Class, anyone? Why? Maybe you all can just write on this itself, on the board itself, you can, on the screen itself, you can write. What do you think? Value, what is, what, what do you mean by value of a brand? Or why is it necessary? Is it recognition? because of recognition yeah like financially when it will be worth financially it will be worth right okay, financially worth all right anyone else you can actually type on the screen itself right on the shared screen you want to try yes Karin is trying to type anyone all of you can just try, put your text on it. Either you can text it or you can doodle it. Financially worth is value for money, right? Yeah. Quality, okay. Very good. Thanks, Erin. Quality, Karen also wrote quality here. Very good. Erin also says quality. What else? How about Nelson, William? What do you all think? Um, influence. Influence. All right. People's Inter influence on them because of the value. Okay. Brand value. So influence, right? Because of the brand value, right? Uh huh. Okay. Who's typing on the chat? Unique design. Nelson says unique design. Okay. All right. Unique design. Uh-huh. Some more. William, you want to give it a try? Mm. Exclusiveness. Yep. Right. So thanks for your responses. Yes, it is because of all. Live and Chen, did you try? No? Yeah, I think about quality, but the someone also read quality. Yeah, okay, quality as well, right? So it's influence, the brand value, financially worth, it's a recognition, it's a quality, it's the exclusivity, right? So all these are the characteristics that goes up to make a brand. So every time you talk about a particular brand, there is some kind of an emotional attachment that the customers or the guests will have towards that particular brand. Okay, some can be historical, some can be social, and some can be really emotional. If you talk about a particular brand to maybe your grandparents or maybe your father or your mother, why you use this particular brand, you can just you can just ask them. You no, know, they will they will tell you a story behind it. So there is historic reasons, there is social reasons. So that is why you have the. Uh, Brand. That is what carries the brand value itself. All right. So moving on, let's just see the value of a brand. So there are three things. One is your customer focus. You need to have your guests as the center of your attention. And then you evolve around how will you manage your brand? How do you evaluate? And how do you create your brand? So when you talk about brand, you are talking about the protection of the brand the brand implementation and the brand culture. So that is when 
you talk about what do you mean by brand protection, brand implementation. Brand protection is how you legally protect your particular brand in terms of its logo, in terms of its name, in terms of the name, uh, the spelling. You know, anytime you see in Malaysia, and or even for example, if you see any ads anywhere or billboards, you can see that TM, trademark, on the side of that particular name or a brand or a tagline, you know? So that is how you protect your brand and anything that's related to the brand. Brand implementation is how you actually bring about and introduce your brand to that particular market and your brand culture. Brand culture is sometimes you do not come down on price. You know, you don't, you never go down on your prices. If you talk about luxury brands in hotels and resorts, they will never compromise on their price. Whether the pandemic is there or this is there or that is there, they're not having enough guests. They will never compromise on their price, but what will they do instead? They will actually add on more services and they will add on more values that adds to their brand culture. So that is how they go about in implementing their brand culture, right? So then you start to evaluate your brand, right? How do you evaluate your brand? After a period of time, once it's come into the market, you will go back and you will do a research about the brand, how people have accepted it. Maybe you send them a short survey or you do discussions with your outlet managers or you go and talk or you just go and get information from the local magazines. So that's how you actually get the updates. So brand valuation happens. So this is where you tell, okay, I have priced this brand or I have priced this product at this price. And in Malaysia, it's at this price. And in the US, it's at this price. In Thailand, it's at this price. So is it worth the money? So you actually do a value for that particular brand. The brand valuation happens when you do an evaluation, when you go and reassess the value of a brand. And then comes in the brand opportunity. So when you talk about a brand opportunity, what do you mean by the brand opportunity? So how far the brand has been extended in that particular market segment. Say, for example, when you when you heard about Marriott when they came into Mar when they came into Malaysia, it was actually Starwood since the beginning, and then slowly Starwood started to become. Uh, it was bought over by Marriott, right? So when Starwood was bought over by Marriott. Initially, Starwood had very less properties, but now because the brand was very popular in Malaysia, it started introducing a lot of other brands of the, under their Marriott itself, you know. So that's why they started W, the Elements, all these are very recent brands inside Malaysia itself, you know, just a couple of years or, or maybe four years or within the period of five years, they've all come in. So that is the opportunity for the brand. So actually you need to evaluate first before you bring in that particular brand into the market itself. And then you start creating your brand design, your identity and your strategy. So it all revolves around your customer. So customer is your central focal, right? So when you say, when you feel that your brand is received, well received in the market, your customers have got feedback for you, they've got positive feedback for you, your business is really on the rise, right? In that case, your brand is really doing well. And this is not a one-time uh, answer or a one-time solution, you know, it's a periodic review. So you need to manage the brand for a period of of time and then you need to evaluate your brand very very systematically and periodically only then you'll be able to know okay this is the level of your brand this is the strength of your brand and then you start working on creation of your brand design and identity sometimes you keep evolving in that in the design itself right so maybe once you started it it never had this feature and then you when you came inside you said okay our rooms now has got um, in a uh, tablet menu itself, you know, so from the room, you can order your menus. And now our rooms has 24 hours um, game console. So all these are how you innovate and you recreate your brand design. So that is what the value of a brand is. So you have to manage, evaluate and create that goes around your customers or your guests who come and 
use your particular product. So the value of a brand also goes by your market percentage, right? So this is 2018 top 10 best global brands, you know, a couple of years ago. So this is their value in the market and then how it has changed for good or for bad or for positive or it has gone low, right? So the company must be publicly traded that's important. And then it must have at least one third of its revenues generated outside the country of origin, right? And then it must be a market facing brand. The economic value added must be positive. The brand must have a purely business to business single audience with no public and awareness. So which means your brand must be publicly traded. See, all these brands are publicly traded. People can go buy shares from these brands. So that is how you actually populate your brand. You make it big, the scope gets wider. And it also says that if the Apple is usually initially from the US, California, right? But everyone has Apple now in any part of the world. And even when you take any phone and you see, it says it's designed in California, but assembled in China. Or likewise, any other product is done like that. So that means the generation of revenue is not only in the country of origin, but it comes also from the other parts of the world. And it must also be a market facing brand, which means your brand is having a market face. That means when you just put up an Apple logo, people knows what it is. When you put an M, you know what it is, right? And when you put an IN, you know it's an Instagram, or when you put an FB, right? So you know it's Facebook. So that is how you actually create the brand face. So the logo is part of your brand face, all right? And then the economic value added must be positive. So if you look at this, the economic value on the last column of this particular table, it is going, it is a positive, uh, figure. That means the, the value is increasing, right? So only then it has a positive image and the brand must not have purely business to business. That means only single audience, right? It, with no wider public and awareness. That means, uh, what do you mean by business to business? Anybody? What do you mean by business to business events or business to business companies? What do you understand by it? Um, we call it B2B. Companies, the company sell their product to another business, like a retail, something like that. Yes. For example, just talk about uh, Dell computers, right? Or you talk about spa services in a hotel, you know? So you talk about this particular spa company, uh, say Mama, Mama, Mama Kim, right? They also have spa services and they also have a restaurant. So it's not just business to business. That means they don't go and sign up with hotels and they say, no, I will provide services only to the hotel guests. No, but they also have their own outlets. They have their own service centers. They have their own spa outlets. So people can actually, any public can just go and access their particular spa outlets too. They don't have to be a guest at the particular hotel. So that's what we mean by it's not purely a business to business, but it is also open to the public. All right. So that's how the value of a brand evolves. Right. So now when you talk about characteristic of a brand, so this goes in to the various values, the mythical value, the exchange value, the emotional value, the ethical and the identity value. So when you talk about the mythical value, this incorporates, right, uh, its reason for being and how representative it is of its time. So when you talk about the M, what do you mean by M? Have you all seen this? What do you mean by this? Any idea, class? Oh, I didn't draw correctly. Do you recognize this M? No. That looks like no. McDonald's. Thank you. Thank you, Zua. Okay, my, my drawing is not that bad. 
<laughs> yes, it is. It is the McDonald's brand, right? So when you look at that particular brand itself, you know. So it's the myth that it has created. What do you mean by McDonald's? Uh, because it has good burgers, right? So it is incorporated among the community that people know by the look of it itself, right? So that is a mythical value that they carry. How representative it, it, it's just a burger company, right? So when you look at the M, you think of a burger, correct? So that is how it represents from the time it was created. <clears throat> And exchange value. This comes from, okay, exchange value is how good it is in terms of the franchise business. If you talk about McDonald's business in Malaysia, everybody has a franchise, right? So you have a franchise, you run a business. So which means the brand is literally created a good exchange value, right? But although it was generated or it was opened up somewhere, the origin is in US or somewhere, just like your KFC. What do you mean by KFC? It's Kentucky Fried Chicken. But how popular it is in the world, right? So it's because of the exchange value that it had created. And then it's the emotional value. Emotional value, okay. Although it doesn't play a big role, but some brands, it does. You know, for example, if your wedding has taken place in four seasons or, or your first child's birth, uh, birthday was celebrated there. So it carries some kind of an emotional value for the guests, you know. So that is one of the characteristics of a particular brand, right? And some people, like I shared the story with you all about Four Seasons, how a guest was asked to uh, get their son to stay in the hotel, right? So that is the emotional value that the, car the brand carries for them, you know. It's about the experience. It's about the story that they carry with them. And ethical value is... Yes, when they charge you a certain amount for their services, they are very aware and the customers are well aware that you follow the legal requirements. That means you do not charge them very, very exorbitantly and neither you charge them below the value, right? Not only in terms of the charges, but in terms of the others as well. Say, for example, if you leave, if the guest leaves their belongings, personal belongings in the room, right? So it is safe. When you go to luxury hotels, they don't come and put this notices on their car park saying that all belongings, uh, the management is not responsible, right? And especially inside the rooms, they don't mention all these things because they accept the responsibility. So that is the ethical value that they carry. And not only that, the, this, the, the brand that plays a socially responsible role in the community. So how far they go and how they support the community in terms of its CSI activities, in terms of providing job openings, in terms of accepting. Uh, say, for example, McDonald's. McDonald's, if you notice, uh, the people working there, right, are all locals, correct? That is the agreement. So when you open, when you look into hotels, Four Seasons and all those places, any hotels that comes about in care, especially the multinational brands or international brands, they must have this boutique concept and they must also have uh, to, to employ locals. That should, that is the, one of the requirements by the government for them to open up their brand in Malaysia which is the ethical value that the brand creates. But they have a minimum percentage, you know, 20% or 30%, or sometimes the brand can go up to 40% or 50%. It depends upon the brand. And likewise, the identity value. So how people relate to the particular brand, the guests, how they relate the particular brand, the identity that's created by the brand itself. That is the characteristic of a brand. Any questions on this? No, so when you talk about the brand itself, it also has two parts to it, the content and the customization. So when you talk about the content, the details of a particular brand, the details of a particular product, the details of a particular uh, hotel room, a guest room, the service. So that can talk about the content of that particular 
brand. It has to be unique. It has to be handcrafted. The way it's operational excellence, storytelling. So how you bring about your brand. That is the content. And when you talk about the customization, you know, uh, has been a strength for luxury brands right from the days of Maharajas of India to today's custom-made products. You know, you talk about custom-made products. What do you mean by that? Everything has that particular brand. And, and you also make it like, okay, there's no other brand like this or there's no other product like this. You cannot have another one like this. So that's very, very exclusive. Usually when you go for uh, eye hand products, luxury products of watches or, or um, watches or glasses. So usually watches, when you turn around, there is one particular identification number, which means no other watch in that particular brand will have that exclusive identification number. Right, so that is customization, and not only that, anything else in your hotel itself, you know, say for example, when your guests know that you're coming into the hotel, I mean, the, when the hotel knows that your guest is coming in, how do you customize, personalize their services, right? You know what menu they prefer, you know what channels they watch on TV, you know what is your favorite room setting, you know what is your air condition uh, temperature that you want to be maintained inside the room, you know what type of what time of the day they want to go to the swimming pool, you know what type of breakfast they would like to have. So that is customization. So all this revolves around the characteristics of a brand. You don't expect you walk into a luxury hotel or you just walk into a Four Seasons or you walk into a Marriott Signature Collections hotels and you don't expect people to look into their thing, the list, of course, for the first time they will do that, but then they don't do that every time. They will always recognize you. They will always refer to you by your name, probably your family also, that's how they will recognize you. you know? That is customization, okay? So moving on, any questions on this class? Convenience no and, thank you. So moving on, it's convenience and cost or time value of prices. Right, convenience. This is why people pay the price. You know, whatever it is, convenient. They want it to be absolutely convenient. That is why they pay the price, right? So, for example, I was observing a particular BMW 7 Series that was launched in 2020. You know, it has all the features. Can, can anyone tell me, boys, if you're interested in cars, do you know what are the features it has? BMW 7 Series. Hello, hello luxury collections. Hello. Okay, girls. Um, I don't know. My Aaron knows. Cards. <laughs> Thanks, Zuha. Knows what? Aaron knows. Aaron knows what? <laughs> Aaron, what do you know? Nelson, you know something? Any idea? I don't know. <laughs> you know, have you heard this auto parking assist? No? You need to answer me. Yes, no, no, yes. Auto parking assist? Yes. So it helps you with that. And then when you shift the lanes, when you drive up from one lane to another, if you do not apply the indicator and if you shift the lane, or by long drive, if it just goes off for a second, for a split of a second, and if your car is eventually moving to another lane, it will just give you a jerk. So with that, you know that you are not in the right lane. So it just gives you that kind of a safety control. So that is the convenience that you have, you know. So the higher the price you pay, it is not because of the product or the brand, it's because the convenience that you need, that is why you pay the price. And then cost or time value of prices. This is also because, okay, the actual cost 
to create that item will also be very, very expensive. So when you talk about a particular room, you can always compare why, why luxury brand, you know, we had this forum, Hex Talk Forum and uh, Mr. Mr. Tom Rollins, he is the general manager then of the uh, Four Seasons Hotel. And they have a Lanka, sort in Lankavi, they have a hotel in KL. So he was talking about his hotel. So when it was question answer time, one student, one student or a hotelier, she just stood up and she asked, why do you charge so much for a chicken satay in your, at your Lankavi resort? I think it's, it's charging about $150 ringgits or something, you know? So, but when I can get that locally outside for just 10 ringgit or even lesser than that. So what, what answer do you think you would have given you? You know, that's the price you pay at the luxury services. You know, I say, yes, you can get that uh, satay for 10 ringgit or even lesser than that, but the convenience, but the luxury of sitting by the beach in your own room, stretching out your legs and having at watching the view, right? They use Wagyu beef to make satay. Who? Four Seasons, is it? Yeah, Four Seasons. Have you done your internship there, Mujitapa? Oh, uh, yes. I have. Very nice. Yeah, see, Wagyu beef is very expensive, right? Correct. And that's the thing. You, you pay for the experience. It's not the actual product itself. And see, like what Mujtaba just highlighted it, the cost that goes into making up that particular product is also very, very expensive. And that is why you have to charge that price. And, and two more uh, characteristics is computing and customer franchise. What do you mean by computing? Computing is all the backend details. Once your details have logged into the system, the other time when you come in, you do not have to do, or you do not have to give in any of your details again. Everything is taken into account, right? So just like any time when you search something on Google, how do you know that all the ads that comes, it is related to that particular thing that you're searching for? How is that possible? It's all the artificial intelligence that goes in, in the algorithms that is gone into setting up that particular program itself, right? And then you have customer franchise. What do you mean by customer franchise? It is, again, the, the rapport that you have with your customers, with your guests, the stories that they share, the experience that they have. All this will go into making up your actual uh, franchise for that particular product. So when you say customer franchise, you do not need to have a big brand or a big marketing strategy. Your guests, your customers will be your biggest marketing strategy. So the way they share the stories, that is how they actually go and market their product. So when you look into any big brands, any luxury brand, hotels or resorts, they will always show people they will always show smiles. They always show uh, stories, you know, like a child with a mother or a husband and wife. So th these kind of moments are always highlighted. So which means you're actually creating stories, right? And then it's community and communication. What do you mean by community? So how they relate to the community. So how you create that experience with that particular community. So when you create that occasions, you know, for example, people who come and stay in Four Seasons Lankavi Resort, Mujtaba, uh, you are my very good example. Do you, do you uh, remember any kind of uh, community events that they do? I didn't, I mean, events, I guess like people celebrating birthday and everything such. Okay, birthdays, right? And then probably yeah. they bring in the local community to serve or some things of that sort. You know, usually it happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, because, because Four Seasons have this uh, kind of culture where they, um, each and every Four season in whatever mm -hmm. country like KL or anything, they always em emphasize the culture of that region itself. Particular so region, if, very yeah. good. Even yeah, like the good. decorations and everything, the rooms, it's I was about to say that. Hotel. Very good. I was about to say that the rooms, I mean, the flowers that they have in their hotel lobby or in their coffee shops, they all get the local flowers. 
the local ingredients goes into in most of their productions you know the the designs in the walls the designs in the restaurants the decor itself you know it reflects the local community so any country they go this is the characteristic of a brand so that's how they actually relate to the particular community and then it's the communication all right communication is again how you constantly communicate with your customers right so communication channels the newsletters the thank you emails thank you notifications the birthday cards the wedding cards right how you communicate it must have been someone's birthday or a wedding invitation or a wedding so you send them an invitation telling them to come and have dine with them probably you will only give 10% discount it's not a big thing but it's a big thing for the guests hey, they've recognized us you know they've given us 10% discount so this is how you actually create and emphasize your brand and lastly it's your customer value so when you do all of these things the customer is actually willing to spend more than they are actually willing to spend you know because it's it's you you're actually touching them very emotionally you relate to them very very personally you know so they don't mind the amount that comes after but they actually you because you're taking care of their psychological needs when you talk about psychological needs that is the top in the hierarchy of needs you know psychologically people know how you react people know how you're going to react people know what you're going to expect so we, that that's the way you actually create that particular brand so when you are looking into the last one is customer delight right so of all the things that you've seen finally it's your customer delight so anyone any hotel they'll tell you hey we want our customers to be happy yes we want our customers to be happy but we want our customers to be delighted that is one step above we want our customers to be more than happy right it's it's the experience that they have it's what they go and share about your particular brand your service that is what they want you know so in terms of appearance attitude abstraction accountability and advantage so the ten characteristics of a brand talks and makes the value for a particular brand so when you analyze a brand for your group projects the first one especially on uh, the brand life cycle just look into these ten characteristics what do they do about customer delight what do they do about the community what do they do about the value right how do they communicate with the people right so you just look into these 10 characteristics and see how they have actually or eventually come about evolving in their particular sector either it's a hotel or a resort or a particular uh, brand in a hotel group itself all right so case study of louis vuitton is shared in the times i think you all might have done it any questions until this class any questions no okay. questions okay i'm sharing the uh, cams id so you all can take your attendance while i can just open up the next lesson Hello, Philip. Take it right. Hope them are not in the class, is it? Give you a two minutes break. Let me just open up the other slides. So if you want to just 
grab water or just take a washroom break, okay? Okay, is everyone back? Hello, hello, hello. Is everyone back? Yes, Miss. All right. Okay, I am just going to talk about counterfeit products, okay? What do you mean by counterfeit products? Any idea? Imitation. Pardon? Imitations, very yeah. good. Anyone else? What can happen if it is Imitations. I have given a link on fake brands, fake and copy. Okay, just click this link and answer your question. Let me see. What do you mean by counterfeit, counterfeit brands? You know, type in that link. Say, copy the design. Mm -hmm. Copy, fake. Good. Only three, four copy, hmm. an imitation of a brand, imitations, fraudulent. No, yeah, that's a very good word, fraudulent. True, right? It is actually fraudulent, right? So that means it is not legal imitations. So like this, do you have any, any, any particular 
hotel brand that is having a counterfeit? Do you know of any brands? But actually, when it comes to hotels, we really cannot copy the brand itself. But what is copied inside? The way the room is designed, the amenities probably, right? Then the logo probably. So that is how imitations are created in the luxury sector of hotels and resorts, right? So when you talk about a particular commodity, you can always get an IP, you no, know, I mean, a patent right? And then you keep that patent right for that particular period of years. And after that, if anybody copies, you cannot question them. But within that period of the patent right, if anybody copies, you can actually sue them, all right? So that is what is in luxury products. But when it comes to services, it's very, very difficult, right? So how do you actually manage that? So that is something the hotels are really looking into because when it comes to service, it is a very open and um, universal one, right? So it's how you protect your brand logo, the brand name, the taglines, all that is what you will have to be protecting. So brand protection, registration, registration renewal, and fighting counterfeit activities. All this is what we call as the legal aspects and the defense of a brand. This is what is going to come in now. Okay, this, this is a chapter that we're going to deal with now. So when you talk about your brand protection, for example, there's a case I've given you all, but it's not about Tiffany, but I've given you a different case that you can read in times, uh, and then you can assess that, okay? So how do you, what are the things that you look into for brand registration? So first of all, when you talk about a brand, when you say, I will have to protect a brand, nowadays, even when you do anything, for example, now, uh, Taylor's logo, it has this. Have you all seen this? What do you say? Rice with the... Have you all seen this? Oh, uh, yes. Right? And they also have TM. TM is very, very small. It's like a super script, you know? Have you seen this? Rice with the best. This TM, TM will actually be very, very small and it goes up like a superlative term, you know, there. So what does this TM mean? It's a trademark. That means you have actually protected this particular tagline, rice with the best. So when people know, when they see that, they know this TM means people cannot simply use it. No other... Uh, company or no other brand or no other university or no other institution can use this tagline. If they use, we can actually officially sue them and legally fight it and we can get it back. So that is how you protect your brand. So how do you protect? First of all, you need to set, uh, register the brand. Only when you register the brand, you will be able to protect the brand. So what are the things that's needed to register your brand? So when you talk about the brand registration, you can you have an N number of listing. So under which one you want to register the brand, either it's a construction material or furniture, or if it's going to be commodities, or if it's going to be luxury uh, hotel services, how and what, under which one you're going to take it under. So that is why sometimes you see a particular brand, they will have a shaving lotion, they will have a perfume, they will have a handbag, have a shoe, they will have a watch, you know, different, different things comes out because they want to have the brand recognition. So usually when you bring in a new brand into the market, they will go under 10 categories. They go under jewelries, they go under musical instruments, they go under kitchenware, they go under furniture, right? So that is how they will bring about the brand into the market. Okay. So that is why it is not cheap to actually register a brand, right? Likewise, if we talk about hotels, Married International. So under the Married International, it has different, 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 different brands. And each brand has its own recognitions, has its own protection rights, has its own uh, legal documents, you know, that protects the brand and their own taglines, all right? So moving ahead, Registration. So registration always comes with a timeline. 
Okay, so when it comes to timeline, you know that yes, after this, you will have to renew it again. If you don't renew it, that means the brand is at stake, right? So usually the registration renewal happens automatically and the companies do not dispute about it. They just go ahead and register it. And I mean, they renew it, right? So you'll just see this case. What happened is Lacoste had problem in Hong Kong and China, you know, because when they brought in their Lacoste brand, they also had a crocodile brand. Have you seen the Lacoste and the crocodile brands? Yes. Yeah. So it came to say that later on, the Chinese company agreed, Hong Kong and China, they brought in the crocodile, right? That they'll give way, that will not be confused with Lacoste and the crocodile. So if you look at the Lacoste crocodile and the crocodile crocodile brand, you see the way the monitor lizard, I mean, the crocodile is placed differently. It is because somebody had registered the brand, somebody had gotten the protection for the brand, and when later on, after a few years, when someone in different part of the world brings about a similar brand, you should not confuse your customers. You should not confuse your client for five. So you have to protect your brand, right? So this is what has happened there. And then if you look into Mexico, an individual registered brand, Cartier itself, opened a Cartier store and traded in Cartier watches before the company could manage to regain its full registration rights when the when Cartier came in. So they came in only with their Cartier jewelries, right? But then later on, they brought in the watches and various other things under the Cartier brand itself. So they had a fight, right? So that's why it's absolutely necessary to know about your particular brand. See how it is moving out in the local brands, as well as the imitations that is causing a lot of issues so you will have to fight it against, right? So that is the company duties, basically. So that's why you have to register and you have to get your protections. And fighting against counterfeit activities is, you definitely need to know the fake items, right? How do you bring about fake items? So usually it is very closely made, right? Just like a original product itself. So you will have to know how to identify, and you will have to constantly keep educating your client profiles, right? Please be aware of it. So we are the only agents, we do not have any other agents. So like this, you will have to uniquely keep communicating to your guests and your customer profile that we do not have any other brand. Some companies declare it very boldly and say, this brand is not available in this part of the country, right? So they will tell you very, very boldly. So all this is to fight against your particular counterfeit products. So what do you need to do? You can actually do nothing. That's what I do. You can actually do nothing, but you can only protect your brand and you can educate your customers. You need to keep sending a lot of communications. What is your authentic product and why is it important, right? Your actual customers, who are with you will never be confused, right? Because they know what is the actual product, but it's the new customers who are actually planning, to think, okay, let's go on to this particular product. Maybe this time I should buy this product. So in the next chapter, when you learn about luxury clients, there's somebody called as excursionist, right? What do you mean by excursionist? Just like an excursion. Do you go on excursion every day? Do you go on excursion every day, class? No? Hello? Hello? Are you with me, class? Hello, class? Are you can you hear me, class? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. Yes, thank you. Do you go on excursion every day? What is excursion? Picnic, do you go on a picnic every day? Right, so that means only certain times or certain occasions, no, no, miss, no. Only certain occasions you will go, right? So like that, 
certain occasions, people will come and buy certain luxury products. So that means they are uh, one-time users or a few times they come in occasional users. So these are the people you need to be very, very careful. And most times the excursionists will take a big segment of your uh, client profile. So you need to be very careful how to deal with these people. So that is where education is very, very necessary. All right, so moving further, what do you do to stop it, right? So you need to get in your registration done, you need to go into government and regulatory bodies, all that little things that you have to do. And you will have to collaborate, right? So when you start collaborating, you will know how to manage. Look at this, the brand code signed the memorandum with the largest China internet shopping site, Taobao, right? So they help to prevent the sale of fake coach products on the Chinese website. So like this, every other brand should be able to counterfeit, find out how you can actually prevent this counterfeit. So usually in the luxury tourism sector, the hotel sector, you do not have this issue, but it's in the luxury commodity side that this issue is a very, very big issue. Do you know a market in Malaysia that sells all these counterfeit products? Is there a market like that here? Don't know. Hello, 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 hello. Do you know any market here in Malaysia? No. And how do you prevent the counterfeiting? So first of all, you need to address and educate your customers, telling them that yes, there are a lot of counterfeits available, please be aware, right? So you can actually bring in the logo, but nowadays the counterfeit products are also, they work it out so much in detail that the actual product details are all in there. Only thing is we do not have an actual identification number, but everything that you have in an actual product, you will have it in your counterfeit product. Maintaining a database of customers, it is very important. The constant connection, the communication channel is very, very important. Continue innovating, differentiating, and upgrading while focusing on your service. Limiting the number of items sold to each person. This is also very important. LV in France for foreigners. It's what they do. You know, if you want to go and purchase, of course, LV brands are expensive, right? But they also limit the number of products that they sell to foreigners. Price discrimination, how you can actually discriminate the cost. LV handbags cost 40% more in Japan than in Europe. By this way, also you can actually control your products and then concentrate on a fewer brands. So you don't need to have a big range of products. Likewise, we saw before, your companies cannot be very large. So you can just maintain smaller brands, smaller portfolio to actually manage and control and conduct global campaign against counterfeiting. This is something that you really need to be doing. You need to do a global campaign. You need to be educating your customer about this so that constantly they are reminded and informed that there are counterfeits available and this is how they have to protect themselves, all right? So this is how you will actually have to prevent counterfeit. So that this, is, this topic is basically for luxury commodities now, all right? So how do we, this is a question for y'all, so y'all can just work it out in your Padlet. Counterfeiting of Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton is most of the time negative. Just, just read this and uh, give your answers on Padlet. We can just review it in the next class. All right. This is about counterfeit. It's all in times, right? Any questions, class? Hello, hello. For Nomis Mujtaba, no, thank you. Thank you, Zoha. Not so far, thanks, Nelson. Nelson, you have any problem with your mic? No, right? Hmm. 
no so far. Okay, so I want you all to just go back to the last slide, the question, okay, and just answer that in Padlet on times. So I will see you all on Friday again, and I will cover topic five and topic six together, lesson five and lesson six together, luxury clients. So there's a video also on times. Before coming for class, I want you all to just 11 p.m. I wish I can start at 11 p.m. Friday. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Can, can we have like an exact time? So like, yeah. I can plan and my said, sleep also, miss, you know? <laughs> I agree. I'm so sorry. Last week, you know, uh, I it's really all right. It's have right. To it's really understandable. Okay. Next week, I have a meeting at eleven o'clock. Okay, but I that's for one hour. Can I start the class early or can I start the class late? You need to tell me, class. Twenty second. What do I have? We it's a briefing session for our foundation students for our marketing at set the time. What eleven o'clock? And this was done. In December itself, so we didn't have our timetable. And my slot to go inside to talk to the students is at 11 a.m. You know the briefing, program briefing. Okay, so can we start at 12 o'clock? Is it okay? Yeah, sure, miss. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Sure. Yes. Sure, um, Masha. For, will be for me, uh, earlier is also fine. You know, it's just one Friday. So. You sure 10 o'clock is okay with you? Yeah, for me, it's yeah, fine. It's fine. Okay, then. Can we have it at 10? Yeah. Class, can we have the class at 10, like from a normal time yes. itself? Yeah. All right, then probably okay, I'll finish sure. at 11. Okay? Yes. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.